care of patients with pain. When a large volume of non-painful stimuli is competing for the gateway of pain, the pain impulses may be blocked. A high volume of pain may override other stimuli and pass through the gate, therefore causing the individual to perceive pain. Massage and vibration will produce an activity in the large diameter nerve fibers. With pieces of pain, the more intense the pain, the greater the number of pieces, and thus a greater number of pieces of treatment will be necessary to control the individual's pain. The human body produces substances called endorphins. These are also known as endogenous opiates. These attach to receptor sites and block pain sensation. It is unknown scientifically how endorphins actually work, but the properties appear to modify and inhibit any unpleasant stimuli, reduce anxiety, and relieve the individual's pain. Endorphins may also produce feelings of euphoria and well-being. For neuropathic pain, analgesics and opioids routinely do not relieve neuropathic pain. Adjuvant medications like NSAIDs, tricyclic antidepressants, anticonvulsants, and corticosteroids actually relieve neuropathic pain. For acute pain, the duration is hours to days. There are, is good prognosis for pain relief. The pain relief may resolve spontaneously or in response to some analgesic therapy. The cause of the acute pain is easy to identify. For psychosocial effects, it is usually transient or none and may or may not disrupt normal activities or the individual's routine. Medication is routinely beneficial for acute pain and surgery can be helpful. For chronic pain, the duration is months to years. For prognosis, it is poor unless complicating factors are removed. It is not routine to have spontaneous pain relief. Sometimes the cause of the pain is known, but the diagnosis can often be complex or undetermined. The psychosocial effects of chronic pain can affect the ability to earn a living, enjoy social activities, or maintain one's self-esteem. Various therapies like medications may be helpful, but the patient may become dependent on these medications. A multiple medication regimen may be used. Surgery can be helpful, but oftentimes it will worsen the problem. Pain is a subjective experience. Only the patient understands and knows the location of the pain, the degree of intensity, and what treatment works, as well as how long that therapy is effective. This is why the nurse must ask the patient about pain. Relaxation and distraction strategies can alter one's perception of pain. A nurse whose cultural background initiates the stiff upper lip approach to dealing with pain may see the patient who outwardly expresses pain as either weak or manipulative. By contrast, patients whose cultural upbringing causes them to hide and deny pain may suffer needlessly unless that nurse can intervene and help them to understand that analgesia will aid the healing process. 
The analgesia will encourage the movement of the patient and decrease their amount of fatigue. Coping with pain requires a lot of energy and debilitated patients are less able to withstand pain than individuals with healthy energy levels. Oftentimes fatigue is caused by pain and this can increase the individual's pain perception. Pain is a stressor for the body and it takes a lot of energy to manage pain. Because of this, chronic pain is often associated with depression and fatigue. An individual's pain level must be assessed whenever vital signs are routinely taken. Approximately 60 to 75% of older adults have and live with chronic pain. The most common conditions that cause pain for these individuals are joint problems from osteoarthritis, degenerative disc, osteoporosis, lower back pain, and pain from any previous fracture sites. Pain may be combined with other chronic diseases and may cause the individual to be debilitated. If chronic pain is adequately controlled, the quality of the individual's life is improved. The Wong Baker Face Pain Rating Scale. This uses numbers, even numbers zero through 10, and it can also be substituted for zero to five to accommodate the zero to 10 system. The flax scale or the face legs activity crying and consolability scale is used to assess pain in cognitively impaired individuals as well as infants. There are various cultural beliefs that affect one's pain perception as well as treatment. In European white individuals, men display strong stoicism. Narcotic use brings fear of addiction for many. Oftentimes, this individual may dismiss the effects of pain and continue to work and carry out any usual activities. They prefer to use non-narcotic medications. For Mexican Americans or Hispanic individuals, these individuals believe that pain is God's will and they are also stoic. Pain may be seen as a consequence of immoral behavior. For men with this background, expressing pain will show a weakness and may cause a lack of respect. Other Hispanic groups tend to be expressive of the pain and discomfort and they may moan, groan, or cry. And this expression is seen as acceptable. For African American or African Native Black individuals, pain is often seen as a sign of sickness. Individuals may express pain openly, but this varies among individuals and cultures. Pain may be seen as something that is just made to be endured. Laying on of hands and prayer are thought to help relieve pain. This culture may rely on spiritual or religious beliefs to help them endure pain. Asian individuals, this will vary among subgroups but often they are very stoic with response to pain. Bearing pain may be seen as a matter of family honor. The individual may describe pain obliquely in terms of body symptoms. They may prefer an oral or IV pain medications. Injections may be seen as too invasive of their privacy. The Native American Indian 
often believes that pain is something that must be endured and they will not ask for pain medication. Pain is often described in general body terms, like I don't feel good. Many may use traditional medicine and rely on herbal preparations. For the Arab cultures, pain is something that is viewed as being controlled and they expect prompt treatment. These individuals may describe pain in terms of hot or cold, and they may express pain more openly to their family than to healthcare providers. There are common terms that the nurse can provide to the patients to help them describe their pain. For the degree of pain from the least severe to the most severe, words like absent, minimal, mild, moderate, fairly severe, severe, very or extremely severe, as well as excruciating. For the quality of pain, descriptors may be crushing, tingling, itching, throbbing, pulsating, twisting, pulling, burning, searing, stabbing, tearing, biting, blinding, nauseating, debilitating. For frequency of pain, terms that may be used are constant, intermittent, occasional, related to something specific, as when an individual may cough. To assist in preventing complications, the nurse must know when it is appropriate to monitor the effects of medications. For example, an oral medication will take approximately 30 minutes before the patient may notice any effects. For an intravenous medication, it can be something that is almost instantaneous or roughly it can take 10 minutes depending on the type of medication. When documenting pain, the PQRST acronym is often used. P means palliative or any precipitating factors. Q is quality of the pain. R is for the region or where does the pain radiate. S is for subjective descriptors of pain. And T is for the time that the pain occurs. Is it constant, intermittent? Non-opioid analgesics. These will include NSAIDs, or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. These often block pain at the peripheral nervous system by decreasing inflammation. These medications may include aspirin, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, naproxen, indomethacin, ketaloric, NSAIDs are available as topical creams, gels, solutions, sprays. The nurse should educate the patient not to use these medications in combination with other over-the-counter dosages of the same medication. Some medications have antiplatelet actions and incre can increase the risk of bleeding. For any localized pain, the individual should consider a topical medication. Opioids block pain at the central nervous system. These medications include morphine, meperidine, hydromorphone, hydrocordone, codeine, tramadol. Methadone is also available, but it is not routinely used for pain control. A very serious side effect can be constipation. 
These medications can also cause respiratory depression, and the antidote for these medications is naloxone or Narcan. Medications with non-analgesic primary actions can also be used as adjuncts for pain control. These can be various antidepressants, anticonvulsants, stimulants, muscle relaxants, depends on the medication's mechanism of action. The nurse always needs to understand how the medication works and to be aware of any potential side effects. For the rights of medication administration, the, the vocational nurse will consider the right patient, the right medication, given in the right dose, with the right route, at the right time, as well as the right documentation. Constipation is caused by opiates because these will slow peristalsis. The nurse should encourage an increase in oral fluids. Stool softeners and fiber-based laxatives like Metamucil can be provided. Miralax has also been proven effective for opioid-induced constipation. Other side effects may include drowsiness, euphoria, any allergic reactions like itching or hives need to be reported immediately. The medication should be discontinued and an antihistamine like diphenhydramine or Benadryl should be given for the relief of itching. For any respiratory depression, the patient will need resuscitated immediately. In a hospital setting, the patient, the nurse will call a rapid response and the code team will come to the patient's bedside. In the home, the physician's office, or clinic, the nurse will provide respiratory support and then call 911. Naloxone or Narcan is an effective narcotic antagonist that can be given intramuscularly, intravenously, or as an inhalation. Addiction to narcotics almost never occurs when pain medications are taken for actual pain. Patients that have pain have a right to expect an effective analgesia will be, will be available to them. Dependence will not occur with long-term use of many of the narcotic analgesias and should not be discontinued abruptly. When pain can be controlled with any non-narcotic, the patient is then tapered off of the narcotic analgesic medications. There are various non-pharmacologic methods to help reduce the effects of pain. It is proven that rest can increase pain tolerance and improve an individual's response to an analgesia. Heat will promote vasodilation of the area. This will increase the blood supply and the movement of nutrients to the affected area. Mentholated products are routinely massaged into the skin giving an individual the benefit of both massage and warmth. Cold will decrease the metabolic rate and nerve conduction, thereby decreasing the pain sensation. There are many complementary and alternative therapies for pain. These can include relaxation, imagery, acupuncture, massage, aromatherapy. When thinking about pain control, the nurse must consider 
aspirin and anticoagulant effects. Aspirin leads to gastric ulcers and it also increases bleeding time in individuals. Acetaminophen or Tylenol can cause, excuse me, liver toxicity. Opioids and their regular use actually will stimulate opioid receptors and increase the sensitivity to pain. Adjuncts to pain management like massage, relaxation, use of pillows, warmth, repositioning, or soft music are taught routinely to patients and family for use in the home care setting. Current guidelines for home care by Medicare and Medicaid require that case management be done by a licensed professional. This is routinely a registered nurse although uh, sometimes a registered physical therapist may also fill the role for patients whose only acute need is continual restorative therapy. The role of the practical nurse is that of direct patient care under the guidance of the case manager. The practical nurse may monitor an ongoing infusion and discontinue the infusion as necessary but must report any difficulties immediately to the case manager. When considering end of life pain control, the nurse will assist the patient to decrease the effects of medication so that constipation does not occur for individuals that receive any opioids. The nurse will encourage an increase in intake of fluids and fibers, administer a stool softener, suggest prunes or prune juice, and monitor the individual for any bloating, discomfort, or a lack of a daily bowel movement. 